Hello. I'm delighted that Southampton Culture Trust is being launched today, a significant moment for the city and its ambitious plans for culture and the visitor economy. Congratulations. I'm sorry that I'm not able to join you in person. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit to Southampton last year when I visited all four shortlisted places for the 2025 UK City of Culture competition. It's brilliant to see the city going from strength to strength and really building on the momentum provided by the City of Culture bidding process. I know you've all been working very hard over the last couple of years and today's event is testament to this. While the competition was stiff, we know that bidding for the title can have a hugely positive impact and can lead to great things. It helps to bring partners together and develop strategic cultural leadership, shining a light on what's already on offer as well as what could be, and opening up access to local heritage, art and culture for residents and visitors alike. It helps to articulate a place's identity and its ambitions for the future. For example, Hull was unsuccessful in its bid for the 2013 title, but went on to win again in 2017. It put on a remarkable programme across the city that year, changing people's perceptions of Hull as a place to live, work and visit. Sunderland, bidding in 2017, created a new arts trust to carry on the ambitions which were set out in its bid, Sunderland Culture, now part of Arts Council England's national portfolio. And Durham created the Lumiere Festival as a result of its 2013 bid, a spectacular biennial light show across the city. That's why, for the first time in the competition's history, we decided to award £125,000 to each of the shortlisted places for 2025 to take forward some of the ideas set out in their bids. I'm so pleased that Southampton is relishing this opportunity. The government is very clear that culture, heritage and the visitor economy all have an important role to play in driving regeneration. They're central to the pride people feel in the places they live and work in, and they deliver significant economic benefits too. The City of Culture competition is just one part of DCMS's approach to levelling up across the UK. It's fantastic to hear of the broad range of partnerships the Trust has already established, including with Southampton City Council, local universities and Arts Council England. I saw that very clearly through all the people I met when I came to visit. I have no doubt that Southampton Culture Trust will continue to build on these partnerships to work with the whole community to celebrate Southampton's wonderful culture and heritage, attract more visitors and si deliver significant economic and social impact for the city and the wider area. I was delighted to see that Claire Whitaker was recognised in the New Year's Honours for her work spearheading Southampton's bid, as well as for the fantastic work she did for the wider cultural sector on the Culture Recovery Board during the pandemic. So I look forward to hearing more about Southampton Culture Trust's upcoming work and coming to see it in action. I wish you the best of luck.